First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak at this uh, Gadufa Research Forum on behalf of the Center for Research and Complex Generics. In my presentation, I will give a background on Center for Research and Complex Generics, describe how we are engaging with the industry in our research methodology, and then highlight the major topic impacting generic industry stakeholders. Our center was formed about a year and a half ago between University of Michigan and University of Maryland. Uh, myself and James Polly are co-directors of the center and Visha Krishnan is the manager for CRCG. You could see our email and also you could subscribe to the list surf at www.complexgenerics.org. The mission of the center is to increase access to safe and effective generic drugs through enhanced infrastructure communication, education, and research collaboration across industry, academia, and the FDA. Thus, we have three major goals. The first one is communication. This is how we perform our outreach to the industry to learn about the problems they're experiencing and then to present this data to the FDA and to the public in publications. The second mission is education, and we are conducting a number of workshops last year and many plans for this year. And hopefully with the COVID restrictions coming down, we will have some hands-on laboratory demonstration and in-person workshops. The third mission is research, and we began some pilot laboratory projects and we're starting interacting with both industry and the FDA on some research activities. Here is the uh, metrics of uh, our outcomes. Over the past two years, we uh, engaged more than 300 different generic industry stakeholders. We conducted a survey with 281 responders, and we had over 50 meetings with uh, industry. We also thus far conducted three uh, education workshops with uh, nearly 6,000 registered pati participants. We began several research projects, two on modeling for long-acting injectables, one on oral drug absorption, and another one on reverse engineering of complex liposomal products. Here are the workshops we plan for this year. Um, there is the first one in June on in vitro release testing and in vivo in vitro correlation of complex generic ophthalmic injectables, implantable and inserted products. We will have another workshop in October on integrating bioequivalences approaches in complex generic product development. In November on evaluation of cutaneous pharmacokinetics. And then in December on excipient and formulation assessment of complex generic products. Please register on our web uh, listserv so you will get announcement when registrations for those workshops are open. This slide describes how we interact with the industry stakeholders. We normally uh, contact small, medium and large generic companies as well as trade organizations, CROs and other stakeholders as well as the agency. We establish relationships and then we have periodic meeting with generic industry every uh, three to six months and monthly and weekly update meetings with the FDA. We use the information that we get through those interviews. We summarize them in the presentation. We um, communicate our funding to the agency as well as we communicated broadly in publications of our funding. Through this communication, we uh, come up with several topics that are constantly brought up by multiple uh, stakeholders. They would be separated into uh, such categories as communications, nitrosamines, clinical studies, impact of COVID, drug device combinations, alternative approaches to endpoint studies, and characterization of complex generic products by analytical methodologies. Communication between the agency and the company often come up in our interviews, and hopefully many of those items will be addressed in GADUFA 3. 
There are still remaining challenges with uh, uh, changing product-specific guidances and clarity of the expectations that FDA has towards complex products on how the testing should be conducted, which leads to delay launch. It is especially difficult for the companies that has developed the first-in-class generic products when the pathway is not clearly uh, defined. Many times, complex generic approvals take more than two cycles of the review. Not all of the aspects and questions are brought up by the agency during the first review, and some of the questions are answered by the agency too close to the goal date and lead to subsequent CRL. There are also always ongoing research in developing understanding around the uh, complex product. Between the time the company holds pre and the meeting, new information is generated by the agency and through collaborative research with uh, university, and it really needs to be communicated to the industry uh, so they could adjust uh, how they perform some of the analysis. In addition, really, there is a very strong need for PhD to come out um, three to five years before the complex product patent expires. Often, companies begin working on the product way before the patent expiration, and there are some products that are coming up, uh, such as in, for orphan indication, pediatrics, and RNA-based therapeutics that would require additional guidances. For some products, also analytical characterization described in the PhD very superficially, which is make uh, difficult to establish uh, the methodology that is expected by the agency. This year, we see a very big impact of COVID on the generic industry. In general, there are very big uh, challenges in the supply chain for the transport of raw material components and API. There are significant delays in clinical trial enrollment across the board, but specifically in uh, drug device combination respiratory products. There are also a lot of shortages of the supplies across the board, but especially for uh, injectable products. Glass vial, prefilled syringes, uh, stoppers, sterile manufacturing supplies, excipients, everything is constrained. In addition, there are labor shortages and finding a talent uh, is very difficult. Everybody sees significant inflation and there is a large decrease in the pricing and the shipping cost of the various components and final products that really delays uh, uh, a lot of approval and uh, um, affects generic industry. Clearly, there is a slowing down of the end of filings due to facilities shutdown, development delay, but also due to inspection-related delays. Nitrosamines is a major issue that disproportionately impacts generic industry because they are producing more than 90% of approved products. There is a reluctance behind API and excipient manufacturers to investigate uh, the sources of nitrosamines, which put the burden on the generic manufacturers. The complex nitrosamines impact very large number of approved products. There are technical challenges, such as the low limits require very sensitive methods, which are sometimes impossible to establish. Complex nitrosamines require synthesis of uh, uh, reference standards. There are also limited or no toxicology data available for both simple and complex nitrosamines. And there are also difficult to find nitrate-free excipients, and that impacts all of the companies. There is some lack of clarity in the guidance on setting the limits. Both simple and complex nitrosamines are treated the same by the guidance, despite the differences in molecular weight. And lifetime exposure is used to calculate nitrosamine levels for the products that are sometimes used only for one week of treatment, like antibiotics. There is a lot of potential for research uh, under GADUFA development of standard analytical methodologies and shareable reference standards control of nitrates in commonly used raw materials and tablets, 
understanding of solid state reaction uh, and the, how formulation impacts the reaction rates, use of antioxidants to reduce nitrosamine formation, but then the impact on product stability and bioequivalence, as well as performing toxicology studies that could be used by multiple companies and the agencies to better define the limit and the use of in silico method to predict toxicity. Clinical studies come up a lot in our discussion. The sample size for clinical endpoint studies, especially for inhalation products, is very large, and sometimes the cost of such endpoint studies exceeds the cost of development of the RLD. There are challenges in finding participants and dropout for studies that have a long duration for long acting injectables, for example. There is a very large concern in how that will impact development of drugs approved for orphan indications or pediatric patients that are stable currently on RLD and the number of patients is very small. There is a very strong need for harmonization of clinical study designs between US and Europe and also the need to be able to use the RLDs from different geographies following analytical comparability assessment. Uh, there is a very uh, de large desire in finding alternative approaches to bioequivalence studies, especially for long acting injectables and inhalation products. And can this uh, clinical trial burden be reduced by additional characterization? Some research in these areas would be really helpful. Drug device combination come up very frequently in our discussion. Uh, devices are heavily protected by uh, patents as well as trademarks and trade dress, which make very difficult to make a substitutable device taken together with high expectations that the agency has for the device similarity, making it very difficult to approve more of those complex products. There are also no available guidance on how to properly calculate a non-inferiority margin to employ in a comparative human factor studies. And those studies are inherently very variable. There are several requirements on uh, characterizing lot-to-lot -lot variability of the plastics, and yet there are only one or two lots of plastics uh, available. In addition, a recent ruling uh, of uh, Genesis Medical Technology versus FDA begin to impact other drug products that uh, employ drug device combinations such as eye droppers. As I mentioned previously, development of alternative approaches to endpoint studies are very important. There is a significant need for these alternatives, especially in inhalation and long acting injectable products, which are all over a billion dollar products with multiple companies working in this area. Yet there is not enough clarity of what would it take to implement alternative approach and what is the extent of the validation of such alternative approach required. There is significant ongoing research sponsored by Gadufa for alternative approaches in inhalation, ophthalmic, and other areas, and yet there is no regulatory precedence on translation of such science into regulatory approval. The agency is very motivated and engaged in modeling approaches. However, there are very limited number of use case studies published, and publication of such studies could increase the adaptation of modeling into practice by the generic industry. The last but not least is analytical characterization of complex generics. There are still significant challenges the company is experiencing when they file complex products such as long acting injectables, uh, liposome, iron colloids, or ophthalmic products, when the product goes for multiple review cycles and yet there are still some deficiencies found. There is some sort of a lack of clarity about the expectations around extensive analytical characterization uh, of those products. And there is also a strong need for better control and prescribed methodologies, especially as they pretend for dissolution studies and particle size characterization. And there are also some um, high expectation on the validation of these methods and 
many times this methods are very difficult to validate on the GMP. In addition, uh, multiple companies bring up peptides uh, and assessment of the sameness of peptides by analytical methodology as well as assessment of immunogenicity. These items still remain very important for generic industry and additional research should be required as well as publications of the findings. In summary, we believe that CRCG had been effective in identifying concerned challenges and potential areas for research to facilitate uh, approval of complex generic products. We truly appreciate our collaboration with the agency and the relationships we built with generic industry stakeholders that increase both our understanding of critical factors that impact development of generic drugs and our ability to bring up those issues with the agency. We hope that GADUFA 3 will come up with alternative approaches to bioequivalence and endpoint studies for inhalation and long-acting injectable studies. There is still a very strong need on collaborative research efforts around nitrosamines with respect to analytical characterization, toxicology evaluation, and excipient control. There is still a need for publications around analytical characterization of specific complex products that based on GADUFA research and development of standard methodologies that could be used by the companies. Publication on use case studies for use of modeling to, for approval of complex generic products will spur up the use of modeling by generic industry. In addition, we have to look forward to the products that will get off patent over the next five years and develop PSGs proactively for products, especially in orphan indication, as well as RNA-based therapeutics. With that, I would like to acknowledge our funding uh, from uh, FDA to fund the center, multiple generic companies and other trade organizations that we interviewed, Sam Rainey at the FDA, who is our grant manager, David Gaw and Lisa Parks at AAM, Jim Polly, Visha, and two students in my lab, Jill Coglan and Alisa Macroni. Thank you.